I met Daryl, I believe it was 2000 and I want to say 2007. Um, I was at the minimum facility in Bridgewater. I got lugged, transferred over to the medium facility. And while I was in the hole, Daryl was also in the hole. He was on the uh, floor lower than I was. And when I got there, I think he was playing some music. So I was listening to his music and then I heard him, uh, he was tapping, you know, he was tapping on the, uh, the little vent. And we started speaking through the vent about different things and uh, as I was talking to him, he seemed very, very knowledgeable, very uh, genuine. That's what, uh, that's how the conversation kept going, just be, you know, by his, uh, you know, him being, uh, I felt he was genuine and very authentic. So we just kept talking, kept talking, and then I was only held in the, in the hole for about two days and then I went to the population. But uh, I told him that, you know, of course we would see each other or, and talk more once he got out of, out of the hole. And once he got out, got out of the hole, we linked up and we, you know, became good, good friends. And he started to tell me, you know, his thoughts and his uh, sentiments on different things in the prison system and, and uh, in the world. And we went from there. So, uh, him walking the yard and and teaching guys um well i know me uh, my, my personal experience with them when, whenever i was out there because i was always out in the yard uh either running or you know playing basketball or you know doing a little weight training and uh he used to always try to pull me away from that to talk to me and you know just kind of you know not get in my head but just kind of fill me out but at, um, besides filling me out, he would like he would try to try to school me, try to try to teach me things, um, or try to enhance what I already knew, and um, I, that's what I meant by the you know him being genuine and the stuff that he talks about only only helps the inmates, only only helps uh, only helps the inmates, and it shines a light on the injustices of the administration. So, of course, they don't want the outside world to know what they're doing and what they're not doing um, for the inmates. For him to be locked up for um, 20 plus years and still, and still uh, feel uh, that, uh, that passion, passionate about what he's saying, you know, being that he's behind the wall, I mean, I think that's just incredible, you know, that he can, he still feels that way and he's pushing, and he's very adamant about what he's, what he's saying, you know, I mean, if, and it, it seems to me like he was like the only one who was feeling that way, you know, so that's why I said he, he stuck out like a sore thumb because everyone's voice was so, you know, minute compared to his, you know, no one was really pushing for anything. One thing I know that he, always wanted to get across was um, shining more light on what is happening in the prison system um, and not only just in the prison system like what the situations that um, happen outside of the prison system to get you know folks inside of the prison system like you know what's what's going on on the outside that all these people keep going to prison. You know, that was one of the things that he um, always mentioned. You know, it's not just the prison system. It's, you know, what's going on on the, out, on the, on the, on the outside world that is uh, causing all these young, most of them black males, to go to prison. And, you know, when they get to prison, they're just warehoused. There's no programs there. The, uh, you know, the food, the COs, the, the cost, you know, it's 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 like a uh, you know on the outside things are messed up and on the inside things are messed up. And then when those guys do leave the inside, they come back outside, it's still messed up. So they just perpetuate this cycle, and that's it. That's that's their life. And then they pass that down to their 
to their seeds, their ki their children, and it just keeps going on and going on and going on. And no one has, you know, no one has has um, stopped and thought about this. Or well, I won't say no one has stopped and thought about it. No one has really put uh, a great effort into um, bringing awareness to this situation, let alone uh, being able to combat the situation. So that was one of the, the, the things that he definitely always spoke about. He was very, very positive, and he really wanted to, you know, you could, you, I could feel his uh, heart on his sleeve for the people, you know, that were uh, in prison um, and the people outside of prison who come from certain neighborhoods and certain situations. So, um, you know, for the most part, every time I got out there and every time I seen him, he would definitely try to pull me aside to talk, you know, but I mean, and, and, and it worked, you know, because, <laughs> you know, although I did hang with a bunch of, you know, different uh, groups of people, he was always, you know, that person that if he wanted to talk, I would try to, you know, stop what I was doing just to hear him or um, con convey my sentiments to him and, you know, we would just build. So, and that's, uh, I stayed true to that and he stayed true to that and that's why I'm here right now.